Yeah. Secure yeah. the tube, get this thing on. Okay, so left upper quadrant fluid. Definitely more descended. Well, let's get going. Let's get upstairs. Every moment counts during a 30-hour shift at Chicago's Cook County Trauma Unit, especially when a patient takes a turn for the worse. A young woman who we're calling Jane Doe is suffering from massive bleeding inside her belly after a devastating car crash. Over the course of even several minutes, her belly just started getting bigger and bigger. It was clear that she was bleeding inside. We didn't know what the source was, but she was bleeding. We had to go to the operating room. That's the only, only way we were possibly going to stop the bleeding and, and, and get her under control. We're starting. We're, we're making our cut. I noticed I'm the only one who wore booties. We'll see if uh, uh, we'll see if you guys foresight. see if you guys regret that decision in a moment. Just table up, please. We need to table up a little bit, please. Watch your mail. So we open the abdomen, the very last layer of tissue. We maintain its integrity. You could tell that there was a lot of blood below it. Okay, we're opening up. We're gonna lose a lot of blood in a second. Okay. We got this. Yep. Ready? Yep. Okay. Get it in. Fast, keep them on. Keep them coming. We're losing lots of blood. Just pack everything off. So take cotton rags and literally just stuff them into the abdomen. Glad I wore my boots. Let's just take a look downstairs. Right I'm going to get the rest of this open. Yeah, we can get this open now. You basically put a stop to the bleeding and then buy yourself some time to get an idea of where the damage in the abdomen is. Can I get a sweetheart? Can I have another plus you can please? Can we do it up top? Uh, it was clear that she was bleeding from a number of different places. She was bleeding from her liver. Also, she had a, a diaphragm injury, and we could see massive amounts of blood pouring through her diaphragm. Another, Alan. Okay, another stitch. Same one. One more. Fast. Okay, so left upper part looks all right. Right upper part, I think this was the main bleeding part there. We got a chest tube in here to see what's going on. Yeah. One of the problems that happens when people lose this much blood, the more blood products you give her, the more the blood has difficulty clotting. Dr. Starr and his team race to stitch together the tears in the patient's organs. But her pelvis is filling up with blood, and they fear it's a losing battle. If you lose your clotting system, there's not much we can do for you. Six more by car, please. Please help me. He needs more blood this patient. The worst thing that can happen is to have someone bleed to death on the operating room table. We need EKG to the trauma reason. EKG to Seven needs OBS orders. Nine needs the barium swallow. Is that done? You're the chief. You got to move this room here. You're backing up now. Guys, let's go. Come on. This is let's, let's move things along now. All right. We're a little disjointed tonight. I can honestly say I don't feel like we're uh, I don't feel like we're on our A game. Then you got you know CT and you got a work up a zone two work up on that guy. So you, you got to move things along here. It's just stagnating. Sir? Andy, keep him traction out to length while you're doing that. I mean, you're trying to protect the artery here, you know? I'm probably a little tougher on the residents. I'm in charge of all the medical student education here. I want to make sure they get the most out of this. I mean, there's not that much blood in the chest, but your superb chest tube job <laughs> exceeded my expectations. This is how they teach to put chest tubes in Northwestern, huh? <laughs> what I can't have is someone leave the rotation here learning the wrong thing. I have that responsibility to the future people that they're going to take care of. We're doing everything to help you, okay? You might have some blood in your chest, they got to get it out, okay? Working with Dr. Dennis is an experience. He, you know, he's intimidating, he's intense, he doesn't have patience for incompetence. I was taught in a very Socratic method. I do tend to put the residents on the spot a little bit. Are you what? Stop talking. Not you, patient. At some point in time, I think you should actually get in the chest. The more you spread, the more bleeding is going to happen. Just get in. Uh, Why, what are you spreading? Um, Tissue. Well, stop that. Just get in. Is your finger in the hole where the two, where the it um, is where the curve eight just went in? Yeah. And? I don't like to yet. Huh? There we go. I'll put a little country muscle into it. <laughs> the patient's loving you right now, Justin. Lace, can you give him a hundred of fentanyl now? You're doing great, man. You've had a rough day today. My intention is to add a little stress to the moment. Because in trauma, if you can't think under stress, then how can I expect you to perform? 
Oh man, I hope this one's in. He, you know, Dennis, he's gonna light me up. <laughs> The stress couldn't be any higher for Dr. Starr and his team. Open up a little more quickly though, let's get this, because uh, this is not the major bleeding right now. It looks like something, some evil is back there. They've spent an hour and a half desperately trying to save their patient, and she's barely clinging to life. The worst injury that she has, she's got a huge retroperitoneal hematoma, so lots of bleeding kind of deep down in the pelvis, kind of behind all the organs from her pelvic fracture. How critical on a scale of one to 10 would you say this is? 11. We fixed what we could fix. Really all we could do is get her off the table, get her downstairs, warm her up as much as possible, give her blood products, and see what happens. The key is we want to try to get that, that blood to clot normally again, get her body warm again. The colder she gets, the less she's going to be able to clot. So we're trying to get her stable. I'm not getting a pulse, Sam. I've got one, it's really thready though. She was already on several medications to keep her blood pressure up. It's super thready, so I don't know how much longer we have. It's half past four in the morning in Chicago. While the city sleeps, Doctors at the Cook County Trauma Unit are taking extraordinary steps to try to save a young car crash victim. Let's start a bicarb drip on her too. We'll go three amps of bicarb and um, a liter of D5 and we'll run it at 150 for now. They've just brought the patient, whom we're calling Jane Doe, down from surgery. Her worst injuries are inoperable, however, and her blood isn't clotting like it should. Is that really her pressure now? No, it's been 73 over 26. Uh, what's my at? Let's get um, some blood up here. Julia? Yeah, I'll call. And we continue to give her blood products. We continue to give her the medication to try to keep her blood pressure up. I'm not getting a pulse, man. I've got one. It's really thready, though. It just became clear that uh, we were fighting a losing battle. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Happy afternoon. Her heart stopped and she didn't have a blood pressure anymore. The deck was really stacked against her. She was losing a lot of blood. Given the degree to which her ability to clot was compromised, there wasn't much we can do. After the first two rounds of epinephrine we gave, still nothing. Third at the end. She's a systolic. She has nothing. OK, whole compressions. Do we have anything? Check for pulse. No blood pressure. We just couldn't get a pulse back, so we called it. Unfortunately, she just didn't make it. And I think this is just one of those injuries that no matter what you do, you can't stop the bleeding. Yeah. But it's always good to think back and think, is there anything we could have done differently? But mm -hmm. I think in this case, I don't think so. Anyway, is there any family, do we know? Nobody's out front. When you realize that, you know, her mom and her dad and any siblings that she has are going to have to deal with that, and it's just that's what's extra heartbreaking about trauma. You can do everything right. You can make all the right decisions. You can get that patient to the operating room. You can get them all the blood they need. You make every right decision, they're still going to die. This is the kind of time when I'll go try to lie down. I'll close my eyes, and all I'll see is massive bleeding. is really weak right now. This right here, this is my donation. Donation? I thought that was your breakfast. No, I ate another one of them for breakfast. You're really going to go after the open candy? Well, I watched her open it this morning. Oh, OK. That was, I made fun that of her when she ate this bag. for breakfast this morning. That was second breakfast. And I dared her to finish it for breakfast, and yet she did not. I so now it ends up in the, in the junk food trauma This drawer. is trauma heaven. Lemon heads and friends I supplied, which nobody ate. Really? Uh, wrong. I well, have that to is <laughs> heinous. What is that? Do you remember what happened? 
What happened? It's not too bad tonight so far. I mean, it's a little chilly outside tonight, so uh, the city's a little bit tempered. Yeah, I want to fix your collar, man. <clears throat> don't spit on me. All right, keep don't, your head still. Okay. Head still. Don't spit. Don't, sp don't spit on me. Senor, ¿cuál es la fecha de nacimiento? Senor. Hello. Point, point to me what hurts. Yeah, yeah. Or don't. Yeah. Why y'all being so vigorous? So we're gonna roll you on your left side, okay, bud? Come on, please. On my left side, I can roll my own. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't move yet. He's gonna take the line please, in first. Please, don't turn him anymore. Okay, I mean. Hold your arms still. So what, what's the reason I'm going my left side for? Just so I can move to your back side. My back side for what? Make sure there's no more stab wounds. There ain't no stab wounds. I, I took, nah, I'm staying right here. Please, please. I'm staying right here. And then it roll my back side. Okay. God damn. All right, man. Take a look here. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you what happened to me, man. Go ahead, no, I, so I believe it. Tell him, come back. Tell, tell, tell him I'm sorry. It's been a long haul, this uh, trauma service. It's been not much sleep, a lot of work. Uh, I feel like I'm always at the hospital, but, uh, you know, in the end, uh, this, is, this is the reason why I decided to come to Chicago right here. So you, you think you want to be on MTV Cribs? You think you want to be a doctor? Here's what your life is every third night. It's like a a slumber party with your six closest friends. We have one shower, but it gets cleaned about once a year, so I wouldn't chance it. We try to work as a team, you know, we try to take turns and, you know, if you can catch an hour here, hour there, it certainly makes the day uh, much easier. And myself personally, I gotta go home and, and watch my kid all day tomorrow, so if, if he doesn't sleep, then I don't sleep. <laughs> so where's Blondie? There she is. Oh, I'm sorry, did we wake you? Oh. It's just awesome. The hair's down and everything. Were you like just in that run stage? All right. So Erin's a fifth year resident. She graduates in like three and a half weeks. She's a good surgical resident. She'll be a great surgeon when she finishes. I give her a lot of autonomy because she's earned it. So I want you to try to straighten your hand out more for me now. Right now? Oh, yeah, right. straighten that finger out. Show me what you can do. All the way. You can do it. All the way open. All the way open. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Good motivation. <laughs> I'm a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. It gets people to do stuff. I've always worked with my hands a lot. Surgeons in general are very do-it-yourself or can-do people where if there's a problem, they're going to figure out how to fix it. As a matter of pride, they may ask for help, but that's a, a level of defeat. Students, if we had problems feeling here, what would that be? I am probably a little type A, a little compulsive. So they're gonna wash you out with a lot of water, put the stitches in. If everything looks good, we let you go home. Okay. Hold on, what about home? You said you're living with the person that did this? Exactly. She's in jail. She's in jail? Uh -huh. All right, you feel safe going home? You think about it. If we need to get friends, family involved, you let me know, okay? Sure. I've had four calls. I've been to the operating room once over those last four calls, and not at all tonight. Seriously, where are the people? I seem to be an awful white cloud for trauma, and I am tired of it. We call other hospitals and ask to take their traumas for the night. The city's unpredictable. I pray for quiet nights, and whenever I do, it never happens. Nothing stays quiet in a city with more than 70 major street gangs and hundreds of neighborhood factions competing for drug money and territory. As they wage war with each other, their casualties have only two places to go, the morgue or the trauma center. All right, where is she? Uh, open it. Let's go wherever you are. We're going to be doing an open chest massage in a second. This is a procedure of desperation. In a 30 hour shift at Chicago's Cook County Trauma Unit, life or death cases just keep coming. All it takes is one gang shooting, and all hell could break loose. We're doing airway over here. All right, where is she? 
Uh, open it. Let's go wherever you are. We had a guy who was shot in the chest and had no vital signs. We opened up his chest to see if we could get his heart beating again. Push all, you the, way in? Push all the way in. Okay, let's go. Come on. Okay. Yeah, big all the way from the sternum all the way down to the bed. Let's go. But be calm. Be calm when you're doing this. You don't want to cut yourself or cut anybody else. Can you get a Mets, please? Blood swisher. Here, you can go all the way through. Do all the way through, but you need to go all the way from the sternum. Get from the sternum. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. Help with the elbow. We're going to be doing open chest massage in a second. I'll get you what you need. Tell me what you want. You can do it with a knife. Work with a knife right now. This is a procedure of desperation. You're trying to get done what you need to do as quickly as possible. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Watch out. Let's keep going. You got to go fast. Okay, why are we down on the ground? Let's get the bed up. Bed up. Come on. We're going to stop doing that. We're done with the chest compression. Move. It's right here. No, here's the heart. And, and OK, we're done. See that? What is it? There's a huge Ventricle is just ventricle. completely destroyed. OK. Is it heavy? Yeah, heavy. No, there's, there's, this impossible. is unsurvival. There's nothing we can do. Basically, it blew off his entire ventricle. OK. That's his heart right here. This is his ventricle. OK, we're done. That is nothing you can do. Time of death is 3.11. As soon as we opened his chest, and I got a look at his heart, and I could see that half of his heart was missing, we knew there's, there's no reason to even proceed anymore. So we called it at that time. So the reason this happens is the bullet has lots of energy. It goes into basically a fixed space that's full of fluid. So it transfers that energy to the fluid. The fluid can't get out any other way, so it just explodes the heart. Just the pressure increases, and it just blows the heart out. There's no emotion at that point. It's trying to do the best thing you can. It's life or death. It's afterwards dealing with the family. It's emotionally difficult. All right, let's clean up. I've done many thoracotomies, but few in an emergency setting. Is it everything like you dreamed it would be, Aaron? No. You want to be able to do the things that are difficult. It's not so much the procedure itself, it's the ability to deal with that stress and to do it calmly and quickly. I feel like if I can handle that, then I can, I can handle most surgeries. We need to get a uh, death packet, though, from the clerk. There'll be, it's a red folder over there. After doing this for a number of years, you kind of get a little bit numb to some of the violence and, and seeing some of the the, the darkest side of humanity. That's probably good to some degree, because if you got too emotional about every patient that came in, everyone who got beaten up, everyone who died, I think you would uh, go fetal and implode. It went all the way in? So who stabbed you again? My boyfriend. Your boyfriend, okay. Yes. Were you drinking earlier tonight? Yes. Okay. The pace can be breakneck even in the final hours of a 30-hour shift. So much so that the unit resembles a battle zone. Hi there, I'm Dr. Starr, I'm the trauma attendant. Just taking a look at, at where the bullet went. Bullet wounds and stab wounds, known as penetrating trauma, make up a third of the cases here. Where did all this blood come from? Did you get shot in the face too? Yeah. He's got another hole in the base of the occiput here. You'll be fine. Relax, 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 relax. In these cases, victims are either innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire or are gang members themselves. Do you know what you got stabbed with? Oh. I'm going to do some direct pressure. So let's get some lidocaine. So someone talk to me. What's the story? Driver, MVC, walking yeah. at the scene. Walking at the scene. Um, both airbags deployed. Then the other two thirds of cases largely involve blunt trauma. Injuries caused by beatings and car crashes. There are three in the other car. You got two of them here. Were you able to walk after the car accident? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. whoa. Look, we're going to do the work for you. You just got to lay flat, all right? All right. So glad, eh? I think a lot of people were out drunk driving tonight. Liz, where do you want this? That doesn't speak well for this society as a whole, but regardless of whether they're a passenger or driver, every single one has alcohol on board. As the bars close, the trauma unit fills up with motor vehicle collision, or MVC cases. Among them, a patient named Takia, 
who was a passenger in a two-car crash. The impact killed one of her friends riding in the same vehicle. But Takiya doesn't know that yet. She's only beginning to understand the enormity of her own injuries. Strap on that. I want to sit up. I want to take my shoes off. Your shoes are off. Andy. What? Can you move your feet? Move your feet. I can't. I want to. I can't. Can you move your legs? No, I'm not. Guys, anyone ever see move her legs when she got here? Our patient was intermittently looking sicker and sicker. She told the nurses three or four times, I'm going to die patient tells you they're gonna die, that's, that's a real bad sign. Can you move your feet? Move your feet. I can't. I want to. I can't. Can you move your legs? No, I'm not. Do you feel that? No. As they begin to connect the dots, Dr. Dennis and his team face a grave problem. They're alarmed by what they see in their patient named Takiya. She's disoriented and in shock following a car wreck that killed her friend in the same vehicle. Guys, anyone ever see her move her legs when she got here? Ah! She's got a big lump here. I'm more concerned about the simulator that's not moving her lower extremities. I don't know why she's not moving her legs, but we need to sort that out. No, that explains it. Yeah. So, what, what does seeing that make you feel about her spine? I think she's probably not going to walk again. Is she on the level? What have you given her, Liz? Uh, I've given her five liters of fluid, two blood. All right, back off on the fluid. No more fluid. Can't get any more blood into her. Her belly's like tight as banding, and it's super tight. I'm not going in. I have blood tubing. To make matters worse, Takiya's blood pressure is dropping while her stomach is rising. Telltale signs of internal bleeding, which also showed up on the CAT scans. Based on that, that was enough of a trigger to take her to surgery. This young lady was looking sicker and sicker. She told the nurses three or four times, I'm going to die. But most of the time when people tell you they're going to die, they do. Guys, we got real problems here, OK? All right, you guys can't have three variables moving, OK? If this vein tears, she dies. It got a little hairy in the operating room for a little while. She ripped the big vein called the superior mesenteric vein. It was like a giant water main breaking. And it was so brisk, you can actually hear it bleeding. I need the vascular clamp. Come on. Same thing. Give me another one, just like that. Stitch. Every time you put a stitch in it, it tore, and, you know, and it just bled more. So it was, it was a real challenge. The grueling procedure takes an hour and a half to complete. Nevertheless, the stitches hold, and the team prepares to transfer Takiya to intensive care. Her status is critical. But Dr. Dennis is cautiously optimistic. I can tell you that statistically, I'm surprised she's alive. She's real sick, but she could be sicker. And that's actually really important. In about a day or so, hopefully we'll reach what we call metabolic stability. If we can get past that, and her chances of survival are actually pretty good. When one shift ends, another begins with a new team of doctors and nurses cycling into the trauma unit, and the process will repeat itself. There was five liters of blood on the floor before he got here. Because your heart's already stopped, you've hemorrhaged out. You're more likely to save someone with a stab wound to the chest than you are with any other mechanism. There are times that, you know, still it's four or five in the morning, I'm going, man, I can't wait till eight o'clock comes around so my relief gets here. You're so exhausted at that point in time. You know, not only physically because you get up, but mentally because you're challenging your, your mind on every one of these patients. And these decisions are not light decisions. People's lives can depend on these decisions. I mean, I had hair when I started this program. What happened? After a few days, another one of Dr. Dennis's patients is on the mend, having cheated death. His name is Tom and he had no vital signs and almost no blood in his body when he came in. 
Now, he's on the road to recovery. It won't be easy, though. He suffered some brain injury when his heart stopped. Tom will probably make a lot of gains, but he probably won't ever be the same person he was in terms of his memory and cognition. Clearly, people did everything that they could for him. The doctors, the nurses, the care here to me was unbelievably amazing. Basically our job every day, we are there during probably the most extreme emotional times in people's lives. And that's what we do. This job has ups and downs. It's got some really high highs and some really low lows. We have some great successes. We have a lot of tragedy. But you do one amazing thing and you change someone's stars forever. 